Welcome back to my channel, my name is Anna and today we'll be talking about books about books. Let's get going. So I always like the idea when people write about books, like, you know, books about books. <laughs> that is so weird to say. I, I just find it really entertaining and interesting. So I thought I would share some of the books that I think you guys will like. So. Also, I actually don't remember the summary of any of them, so I'm just reading it off so that I can give you accurate summaries. And um, yeah, let's get going. First book is The Secret Book and Scone Society by Ellery Adams, and this is about Springs, North Carolina, is a place of healing. Strangers, strangers flock here, hoping the natural god hot springs, five star cuisine, and renowned spa can cure their ills. If none of that works, they often find a way to miracle books, where over a fresh baked comfort scone from the gingerbread house bakery, they exchange the stories with owner Norda Pennington in return for a carefully chosen book. That's not a special talent, prescribing the perfect novel to ease a person's deepest pain and lighten their heaviest burden. When, when a visiting businessman reaches out to Nora for guidance, she knows exactly which novelist will help. But before he can keep the appointment and medical books, he is found dead on the train tracks. Stunned, Nora forms the secret book and scout society, a group of damaged souls yearning to gain trust and earn redemption by helping others. To join the society, members must divulge their darkest secret the terrible truth that brought each of them to Miracle Springs in the first place. Determined to uncover the truth behind the businessman's demise, the women meet in Norda's cramped and cozy bookstore to share stories and trade support. And as they untangle a web of corruption, they also discover their own courage, purpose, and a sisterhood that will carry them through every challenge, proving it's never too late to turn the page and start over. So that sounds really like a fun idea, so I really can't wait for it. The next book is The Library of the Wind by A.J. Ha by AJ Hackworth. Many years ago, Claire was named Head Librarian of the Unwritten Ring, and neutral space in hell where all of the stories unfinished by the authors reside. I feel bad now, because I actually have unfinished stories in, fin in my fin fiction days. So this book is calling me out. Fun. Her job consists mainly of repairing and organizing books, but also of keeping an eye on restless stories that risk materializing as characters and escaping the library. I don't blame them. And when a hero escapes from his book and goes in search of his author, Claire must track and capture him with the help of former muse and current assistant, Brevity, and nervous demon courier, Leto. But what should have been a simple and routine what goes horrifying wrong when a terrifying angelic Ramiel attacks them, convinced that they hold the Devil's Bible. The next of the Devil's Bible is a powerful weapon in the power struggle between heaven and hell. So it falls to the librarians to find a book with the power to reshape the boundaries between heaven, hell, and earth. My next one is The Book of Living Secrets by Madeline Roof. And I actually already read this as an audiobook. I mean, it was okay, and there were some parts I didn't like, and some parts I kind of expected to be better, but that never happened. So, with this one, uh, no matter how different best friends Adele and Connie are, one thing they always had in common is the love of a little known gothic, mm, gothic romance called Mariah. So when the girls are being tempted by a mysterious stranger to enter the world of the book, they hardly suspect it will work. But suddenly they are in the world of Moria, living in one campus they have obsessed about for years. Except all is not how they remember it. The world has been turned upside down. The lavish balls and star-crossed love affairs are now interlaced with unspeakable horrors. The girls realize that something dark is lurking behind them foray into fiction and they will have to rewrite their own arcs if they hope to escape this nightmare with their lives. So it sounded interesting but I couldn't really have, have a good reading for it. So, hello. <laughs> My 
next book is The Bug Charmer by Karen Hawkins. And this is about Sarah Dove as a no ordinary book one. To her, books have always been more than just objects. They live, they breathe, and sometimes they even speak. When Sarah grows up to become the librarian in her quaint southern town of Dove Fawn, her gift helps place every book in the hands of the perfect reader. How recently, however, the books have been whispering about something out of the ordinary, the arrival of a displaced city girl named Grace Wheeler. If the books are right, Grace could be the savior that Delph, Delph Pond desperately needs. The problem is, Grace wants little to do with the town or its quirky residents. Sarah's chief, chief among them. It takes a bit of urging in the helping of an, of an especially wise book, but Grace ultimately embraces the challenge to rescue her charmed new community in her quest. In her quest, she discovers the tantalizing promise of new love, the deep strength that comes from having a true friend, and the power of finding just the right book. My next book is The Paris Lady by Janet Skillison Charles. Paris, 1939. Young and ambitious Andrea Chouchette has it all. Her handsome police officer, Beau, and a dream job at the American Library in Paris. When the Nazis march into Paris, Ardell stands to lose everything she holds dear, including her beloved library. Together with her fellow librarians, Ardell joins the resistance with the best weapons she has, books. But when the war finally ends, instead of freedom, Ardell pays the bitter sting of unspeakable trail. One time in 1983, Lily is a lonely teenager looking for adventure in small town Montana. Her interest is pricked by her solitary elderly neighbor. As Lily uncovers more about her neighbor's mysterious past, she finds that they share a love of language, the same longings, and the same intense jealousy, almost suspecting that a dark secret from the past connects them. My next book is The Lost, the Lost Books, The Scroll of Kings by Sarah Plinius. A fantasy where books literally come to life. I wish they could come to life. That would be so cool. The powerful lost books at the palace library are infecting the, the rest with the in evil magic, and two unlikely friends must figure out who or what is controlling the books and the power. If they can't, the entire kingdom could be at risk. The next one is The Forgotten Book by Michelle and Grazian. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. A Jane Austen inspired YA tale about a 16-year-old girl who finds a magical book and discovers that anything she writes inside it comes true. Emma is used to things going her way. Her father is headmaster of a prestigious boarding school. Her friends take her advice as gospel, and she is convinced that a relationship with her longtime crush is on the horizon. As it turns out, Emma hasn't seen anything yet. When she finds an old book in an abandoned library, Things really start going Emma's way. Anything she writes in the book comes true. But the power of the book is not without consequences, and Emma soon realizes that she isn't the only one who knows about it. Someone is determined to take it from her, and they will stop at nothing to succeed. A new boy in school, the arrogant, aloof, and irritatingly handsome, does seem to one turn becomes Emma's unlikely ally as secrets are revealed and dangers creeps ever closer. Next one is The Library of Lost and Found by Fendla Patrick. Again, I'm sorry if I said her name wrong. Library and Martha Storm has always found it easier to connect with books than people. I am late! Though not for lack of trying, she keeps careful lists of how to help others in her superhero themed book. And yet, Sometimes it feels like she's invisible. All of that changes when a book of fairy tales arrives on her doorstep. Inside, Martha finds a dedication written to her by her best friend, her, grandma her grandmother Zola, who died under mysterious circumstances years later. When Martha discovers a clue within the book that her grandmother may still be alive, she becomes determined to discover the truth. As she delves in deeper into Zola's past, she unwittingly reveals a family secret that will change her life forever. Man, it's always not that great to reveal your past. Like, 
Because of that, because there's always something that will change your life forever. So let's just leave the past as it is. My next one is The English Bookshop by Janice Willley. An inheritance, a bookshop, and a promise. Lucy isn't ready for a life-changing journey when it comes knocking. She just wants to keep everything the same as the day her stepfather died. Unfortunately, expenses have overtaken her small family business, forcing her to do something quickly to keep it afloat. When Lucy finds out she has inherited a bookshop in England, she travels to see it, intent on selling the property as soon as possible. But once there, she meets a wonderful, kind group of villagers including a handsome bookseller who would challenge her decision to make a quick sale. What begins as a way to make money for her business in Seattle becomes an experience that uncovers family secrets and reveals the kindness of strangers. In England, Lucy just might rewrite her past in order to follow her heart. That sounds so cute. So I actually keep hearing about this book a lot, I just never got to it. And I'm hoping you'll read this year. And that is The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Eternity. And the word per white is that translation. It's based on the experience of real life Auschwitz prisoner Dita Carlos. This is an incredible story of a girl who risked her life to keep the magic of books alive during the Holocaust. This is gonna make me cry. Oh my god. Oh. 14 year old Dina is one of the many imprisoned by the Nazis at Auschwitz. This is definitely gonna make me cry. Taken along with her mother and father from the Tennyson ghetto in Prague, Dina is adjusting to the constant terror that is life in the camp. When Jewish leader Freddy Hershich asks Dina to take charge of the 18 precious volumes, the prisoners have managed to sneak past the guards. She agrees, and so Dina becomes the librarian of Auschwitz. Oh, this is gonna make me cry so bad. Oh my god. My next book is The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. Nina Redmond is a literary matchmaker. <laughs> Pairing a reader with, the per with that perfect book is her passion, and also her job. Or at least it was until yesterday. She was a librarian in a hectic city, but now the job she loved is no more. Determined to make a new life for herself, Nina moves to a sleeping village many miles away. There she buys a van and transforms it into a bookmobile. That is an awesome van. A mobile bookshop that she drives from neighborhood to neighborhood, changing one life after another with the power of storytelling. From helping her grumpy landlord deliver a lamp, the sharing picnics with a charming train conductor who scenarios her with poetry. Nina discovers there's plenty of adventure, magic, and soul in the place that's beginning to feel like home. A place where she just might be able to write her own happy ending. On that sounds so sweet. And my last one is The Book of Lost Names by Christine Harmel. Emma Trumbo Abrams. A semi-retired librarian in Florida is showing books one morning when her eyes lock on a photograph in a magazine lying open nearby. She freezes. It's an image of a book she hasn't seen in 65 years. A book she recognizes as the Book of Lost Names. The accompanying article discusses the looting of libraries by the Nazis across Europe during World War II. An experience everyone remembers well and the search to reunite people. One moment. The accompanying article discusses the looking of looting of libraries by the Nazis across Europe during World War II, an experience everyone remembers well, and the search to unite people with the text taken from them so long ago. The book in her photograph, an 18th century religious text thought to have been taken from France in the writing days of the war, is one of the most fascinating cases. Now housed in Berlin Central, on this bibliotheque library. It appears to contain some sort of code, but researchers don't know where it came from or what the code means. Only Emma holds the answers, but will she have the strength to revisit old memories and help reunite those lost during the war? As a graduate student in 1942, Emma was forced to flee Paris after the arrest of her father, a Polish Jew, Finding refugee in a small mountain town in the free zone, 
She begins forging identities, documents for Jewish children, fleeing to neutral Switzerland, fun amazing people, covers with the price, and along with the mysterious handsome forger named Remy, Emma decides she must find a way to preserve the real names of the children who are too young to remember who they really are. The records they help in the book of lost names will become even more vital when the resistance cell they work for is betrayed and Remy disappears. Oh, and this is also gonna break my heart. No! Okay, well, that's uh, all the books I have. There are books about books, so some of them are set in World War, as you can tell. I know, I know for sure it's gonna break my heart. So that's fun. <laughs> oh my god. But anyways, if you like this, please comment, like, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time we post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>